Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here for a while, we look at open source alternatives and we try and showcase the best stuff that's available out there. So this video today is one of my favorites to make because it can help people make the switch to more privacy respecting, open source, more ethical software that they don't have to pay subscriptions for, that they can donate to if they like. And I feel like it just makes the world a slightly better place. It was these sort of alternatives that got me interested in the world of Linux to begin with. But if you aren't interested in the world of Linux and you're still very much baked into Windows or Mac, then this list will still apply for you. So here's my recommendations for some open source apps that you need to switch to, or at the very least try out in 2025. We've got a lot to get through, so I'm not gonna spend long, but there are some key criteria that I wanted to get through. First of all, the app does need to be open source in some way. This does not mean that it needs to be free software as in freely licensed under GPL or whatever, it sometimes is, but it, there needs to be transparency and the code for the software available mostly. Now, also, I'm not excluding software that you can pay for, for added features, but for the most part, most of this stuff is financially free as well, which is great. And finally, I'm not gonna have anywhere near the amount of time to explore any of these apps in any great detail. But if you subscribe to the channel, I'm gonna be going through this list over the coming months in more detail so that we can all learn and see what these apps are capable of, whether you're running Windows, Mac or Linux. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So first up, browsers. You can see from the video that I'm running Firefox and I've been running Firefox for some time. I still have my questions about the funding model that they have. So my recommendation to users that are looking to try out a browser and as an alternative to Edge, Safari or Google Chrome is at the very least try Brave. Brave is a great browser that does what you want a web browser to do. It has a bunch of great features built into it. There are a bunch of great browsers out there that do very similar things nowadays. But when it comes to a combination of privacy and user-friendly features in a browser that has a strong proven track record of doing what they say they're gonna do, Brave definitely takes the cake there. Now, my secondary recommendation would still be Firefox or at the very least a Firefox-based browser like Florp. Florp is a fork of Firefox and it has been under really active development. It's not quite as fully fleshed out as something like Brave, but it's well on its way and a lot of people are considering it to be the Brave of the Firefox based browsers. Uh, I really like where this project is going. So if you wanna try out something completely new, it's actually not that new, it's been around for a little over a year now, but if you wanna try out something cool, then definitely go and try out Florp. All right, moving on. Logsec is my next recommendation for kind of your database note taking and writing and uh, kind of all in one collection of information apps. Uh, so this is very similar to something like Notion or even Obsidian, which Obsidian remains a good recommendation and parts of it are open source. Now, to be fair, Logsec, not all of it is open source. They are still gonna be open sourcing the back end once they have uh, all of the audits cleared for the security levels of this application. But they are looking to add the same level of extension and, uh, and features that something like Notion and Obsidian has so that you're not tied to something that requires uh, hefty subscriptions uh, from you to use. So they've got great feature sets already built in. They've already got well over 150 uh, plugins and extensions available for it. And I really like the direction that this app is headed. So Logsec, go check it out if that is your speed. Now, when it comes to the overall uh, security of your system, you can't go wrong with something like Bitwarden. Password management, I think, is like mandatory in 2025. If you're not using a password manager, then you definitely need to start using one. And Bitwarden is a great place to start because while they do have uh, great enterprise and business related plans that they sell, and that's what funds it, it is really powerful and free for personal use. And they have apps and services on and extensions for literally everything under the sun. I've been using Bitwarden now for years and uh, it has been nothing but solid. So I can't recommend that enough. Back on the note taking side of things, when it comes to more conventional, I guess, personal note taking, Joplin remains my recommendation. And I know I mentioned this one in my last uh, switch to the open source apps video that I did uh, quite a few years ago. And there are some other contenders in this space. So I'm not gonna spend too long on Joplin, but I did just wanna highlight it again because A, it's very user-friendly, very approachable if you're used to Evernote or something like that. 
and it works really well on mobile as well. They do have a built-in cloud synchronization service that you can utilize, and they also have the ability to link in with other cloud syncing services if you're wanting to back up your notes with something else. So if you're looking for an alternative in note-taking to OneNote or to Evernote, then Joplin is a great place to, uh, to start. My only trade-off with that is that uh, unlike OneNote where you have great sort of inking and pen capabilities, uh, Joplin does fall over in that regard. It's very much text-based, although you can add obviously web clippings and images in there as well. A few contenders in this space though are Zettler. Zettler? I'm not really sure how you say it. I'm gonna go with Zettler. Um, this is very akin to something like Ulysses on the Mac. It is a writing application that is based on helping you get your ideas ideas all the way through to being able to be uh, ready to be published, uh, mostly in the online space. So whether that's in latex or whether it's in markdown or whatever format you're using, uh, it is an app to try and help you with that and keep yourself organized. Also another contender in this space is Notes Nook. Notes Nook to me looks very, very similar to something like Evernote. It has an interface that harkens back to the Evernote of old and also the green highlights definitely don't help that impression as well. It's end-to-end -end encrypted. I believe this one is fairly new. You can have a look around on the GitHub site for all of these applications uh, to have a look at what exactly uh, is going on, how many releases they've had, but pretty much all of the recommendations that I'm giving today are under active development and have seen updates in the last six months. And that's really important to me. All right, so next up, let's talk about cloud. I've often recommended Nextcloud as a way to gain control over your own data again, because honestly, the cloud uh, the cloud service providers like Google and Microsoft and, um, and even Apple to a degree just don't respect the user's privacy nearly as much as they should. And I think self-hosting cloud stuff wherever you can is the way to go. Nextcloud has been kind of the standard for self-hosting clouds, but I recognize that that's not everyone's uh, cup of joe. So there's a kind of a secondary recommendation here. I remember last time I did this video, I handed that out to P Cloud. Since then, uh, Internext has become a really value-driven and really transparent privacy respecting alternative to the point that they uh, have a whole page dedicated to themselves versus P Cloud. And I thought that was interesting. Uh, not only do they have an open source uh, code transparency and their privacy respecting as far as the laws in the European Union and elsewhere, I find that their pricing is pretty compelling as well, whether it's individual kind of annual plans or whether it's lifetime plans on some of their more large data amounts. So. Again, um, full transparency, I did actually do a video for Internext quite a few years ago that uh, was a sponsored video. So while I'm not sponsored by them this time around in just my looking for alternatives to pCloud, for me personally, I do self-host my own cloud uh, and that's what I use on a daily basis. I also use that to manage my photos. Um, so I'd still strongly recommend that people uh, host their own cloud if at all possible. But if you are just looking for a privacy respecting uh, cloud that you can back up your files to and have file synchronization, uh, Internext might be worth a look. We can't talk cloud without talking about email because email is just one of those things that we all have to deal with. And my goodness, can I not give a bigger recommendation than to just use Thunderbird? Thunderbird has undergone so much work in the last few years since I made that video that it is such a like professional polished looking email app now. And they even have a fully baked client uh, available on Android as well. And I think they might be working on one on iOS as well. Thunderbird is primarily donations driven. It has a very robust set of extensions. Its default look and feel now is so much better than what it was. And it is capable of handling all of the recent email protocols that it would be expected to handle. I've been using Thunderbird uh, since the 125 release, I think. Uh, and it's just been an absolute pleasure compared to the Thunderbird of old. So if you haven't checked out Thunderbird in the last year or so, you owe it to yourself to go and check this one out uh, because I think it is venerable, it is well tested, uh, and it has uh, done an incredible job of, uh, of updating its look and feel. Uh, it is worth uh, giving a recommendation to ProtonMail as well if you are looking for a more privacy respecting email service, I guess. Um, because at the end of the day, Thunderbird will only tie in with whatever email account you already have active. Uh, and it does actually work with ProtonMail accounts. But if you are looking for an email provider that respects your privacy from the jump, then ProtonMail is probably what you are going to want to use. Using Thunderbird, I think, is a great first step for most people. And ProtonMail, uh, 
while they are a great email service, um, it is also worth checking out the fact that they actually have their own dedicated email app now as well. Uh, so they're not just a service, they are an app as well that you can download and run uh, on Windows, Mac and Linux. All right, so then when it comes to actual documents, uh, obviously LibreOffice is still the gold standard here. As sort of clunky as it looks, uh, honestly, LibreOffice is just under such active development and it's been around for such a long time now that you really can't beat it. Like here it is in Zorin and like to me, it doesn't look too bad uh, in the tabbed format with the theming that Zorin has. And Zorin OS, just as a side note, is a great place to start if you're looking to switch to Linux as it really smooths the gap between switching between from Windows over to Linux, including a little bit of Windows app compatibility layer thrown in there. But when it comes to LibreOffice and what this program and set of tools is capable of, uh, it's really quite powerful. And even though it looks old, it is still the venerable one to beat. Now, if you're looking for a slightly more simplified option, my recommendation remains with OnlyOffice. OnlyOffice have, have been doing this not quite as long as LibreOffice has, but they have undergone a lot of work and they're under active development. They got a, uh, a big release only a few months back. Uh, they fleshed out a lot of their PDF tools in the most recent release, which I really liked. And also it is worth pointing out that they integrate really, really well. If you do choose to run your own Nextcloud instance, you can get sort of a cloud-based uh, office editor akin to something like Google Docs or Word Online, which I really like the idea of. Okay, let's talk entertainment because this video is already getting too long. Uh, FreeTube, if you're not using FreeTube for your just your casual YouTube scrolling, uh, you really should because the amount of data that YouTube collects on you and your viewing habits is uh, is pretty insane. And the active development that FreeTube has undergone for many years now and its availability on all of the major platforms is really excellent. They have integrations for things like uh, obviously blocking ads, but also um, skipping sponsored segments, which pains me as a content creator to say, but those options are there if you want them. Uh, and so FreeTube is a great way to watch YouTube casually without any of the rubbish that Google would like you to engage in when on YouTube. Uh, in that vein, SpotTube is also a fantastic way to find and listen to music. It is an open source Spotify client for each platform and it isn't just an Electron wrapper. It's under very active development. They have a new release every three or four months. And as you can see here, they've just got a really tuned down set of features that uh, don't require you to log in. You can just use the open public and free Spotify and YouTube music APIs to access the libraries there. There's no telemetry or anything like that. So fantastic way to listen to music. When it comes to online meetings, it seems like there's one of them going on every other day. Nowadays, uh, Jitsi Meet is a great way to host online meetings without having to use the big players like Zoom and Microsoft Teams, etc. Um, Jitsi Meet has been around for some time now and they do have a way that you can self host a Jitsi instance if you're looking to utilize this on a regular basis. However, you can just jump into the website, set up a meeting and get going straight away. So the next time you do have to host an online meeting, check out Jitsi Meet and you might find yourself uh, not playing into the hands of some of the big tech. Uh, also, when it comes to managing tasks, this has been a contentious one for some time because it seems like there's always a new player in this space, uh, but Hang with me on this one because super productivity, while it doesn't look like a million bucks, actually has a really powerful combination of features that you often only see in more expensive productivity apps. So the idea is that you can integrate this to-do list app, which is essentially what it is, in with time logging or time blocking features, and you can integrate it in with a lot of the platforms that a lot of people get their online work done in, whether it's Jira, GitLab, GitHub, OpenProject, or others. You can also then connect in your calendar so that the tasks that you set for yourself, whether you block time to do that task, or if you have a certain, uh, obviously a due date or a due time, or you're logging how much time you're spending on that task, all of that can be reflected in your calendar as well. Uh, there are other helpers that you can bring into it like uh, Pomodoros or focus timers, that kind of thing. And all of this is done locally on your device. There is ways that you can synchronize your own data so that you can access it over multiple uh, platforms. But it is worth pointing out that I guess this one leans a little bit more towards your developers and programmers as opposed to others. But I think it still holds up and its, uh, and its toolkit is actually a useful combination. Now, when it comes to backing your stuff up, this one is a contentious one because backups are like so dubious these days where if a backup goes wrong, that's usually when you hear about a particular backup service. So I have two 
two. The one that I personally have used for a long time is Free File Sync. And while it doesn't look like a million bucks in that it is just a comparative tool to compare what kind of data you have in one place compared to another, it does plug in with a lot of different cloud providers and standard uh, hardware, network shares and that kind of thing. Uh, and it does all of this very reliably. Like I've been using this app for years and it has uh, backed up all of the stuff that I've had in multiple places for a long time and it's never missed a beat. Now, when it comes to actually re uh, restoring stuff, you can obviously put it the other way. So you can have two-way synchronization uh, if files go missing and it has really uh, verbose version tracking and that kind of a thing. So that's kind of my primary recommendation of something that I know and I've tested and used and it's still under active development and, uh, and I recommend it. One that I hear mixed reviews about is in that it's open sourced to an extent and it has a lot of great features that it touts on its website. But I've also heard of some uh, horror stories of database corruption with this one as well. So Duplicati is a really polished, fully fleshed out backup tool that can use on whatever platform you have. You can obviously use it for free as a personal user and then upgrade for the uh, online storage that they will offer you with it. But there are just just a few interesting stories floating around of people uh, c having corrupted backups and really being left in the dark. So hence, Free File Sync is kind of where I would start there. And it's not terribly advanced to get your head around. There are definitely more uh, robust tools in this space that if you're serious about backing stuff up more than just, you know, your average documents and, and photos and that kind of a thing, then you might need to go further afield. But Free File Sync is a great one. Video editors, Caden Live and OpenShot have been my standard recommendations for years and it remains the same. Look, there are great alternatives there in the proprietary world that'll try and upsell you on, you know, better features or no watermarks or that kind of thing. But when it comes to like just editing a video, the core features of what most people will want. OpenShot is a great way to get your feet wet and they've recently undergone a, uh, a new update that's modernized the look of it, which was very necessary. OpenShot 3.3 came out um, just a little under a month ago now and, uh, and it looks like a great update. Uh, but if you do want to get serious, Caden Live is a great place to start. Much beyond that, I think it's worth then looking at obviously DaVinci Resolve and those, but obviously DaVinci Resolve is not open source, whereas Caden Live and OpenShot are. Okay, we've made it to pretty much the end of the video. I did want to give a shout out to two projects that I'm particularly excited about, but they're still in sort of very active development. They're still in alpha or beta testing, and that is a fine. Um, and that is kind of a, again, it's very similar to something like Obsidian or uh, Notion or that kind of a thing. It works a little bit differently. Um, and I think it's more geared to be, um, what's the word? A little more free flowing, but I really like where this is, uh, where this is going and the kind of um, polish that is being put into this app from the get go. It seems much more um, akin to project management and it's sort of set up for that by default, as opposed to some of these other ones, which are very blank canvas you can kind of do what you want with them. Uh, so a fine, a fine AI, I'm not really sure which one is which, uh, but that is one to watch. Also another one to watch is Space Drive. Uh, Space Drive promises to be one file explorer for all of the different files and databases that you might have. This could be very powerful. They're already targeting an open source cross-platform development. They're making instances available for Docker and that kind of a thing, but they have really great tools to integrate with various cloud providers and network shares and all of that to have it all unified under one app to make file management just a lot easier. Again, they've got a development roadmap that you can go check out. Out, and that seems to be carrying on. Their last update was in March of last year. So we'll see. Space Drive is one to watch. All right. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments what your open source apps are for picks this year, which ones you would recommend switching to. And I will see you all in the next one.